boy, all right. What's up, DC TV? I am back, it's me, Hector Navarro, and it took some doing, but I think, I think that I fixed the time stream, you guys. I think everything is in its rightful place where it belongs. I'm pretty excited about it, I'm pretty stoked. It took a lot of work. I mean, I was in there for like thousands of years, like a long time, but uh, I think I fixed everything. So I'm back, guys, to tell you about DC TV this week. Let's get into it. First up, The Flash. The penultimate episode. Okay, last episode we saw Barry came back from the dead, from the Speed Force itself. Zoom is gathering an army of rogues. In this week's episode, Barry is feeling pretty overconfident for a guy who came back from the dead. But I guess that uh, that's you know reasonable because when you come back from the dead, it's like, hey man, what can kill you? Nothing, literally, I came back from the dead, not a big deal. Also, Dr. Tina McGee comes back. Oh, that's awesome, played by Amanda Pays, who of course is reprising her role from the original 1990 The Flash TV show, which is very awesome. Her and John Wesley Shipp do have a little moment. I don't wanna give anything away, but, uh, but it's pretty great. Also this episode, it's not all just kicks and giggles, guys, okay? There's real threats, like, Laura Lance. Laura Lance? How is that possible? Laura Lance is back? It doesn't even make any sense. Laura Lance is back from the dead. How can this be? Spoiler alert, it's Earth 2 Laura Lance. <laughs> it's not Black Canary, it's Black Siren, which is pretty cool. So she's leading an army of Earth 2 rogues, all led by Black Siren. And I think, here's a pretty cool comic book connect. The original Black Canary in DC comic books actually came from Earth 2 as well, and then later was integrated into the Earth 1 storyline, and that's where uh, Black Canary originally came from. She was a member of the Justice Society of America in World War II, it's pretty awesome. So I think that's a nice little uh, tip of the hat and nod to the comic books. Also, Cisco says a line, something akin to, I'm smelling what you're stepping in, and it's pretty hilarious. Guys, I know that I'm having a lot of fun. We like to have a lot of fun here on DC All Access, but in all seriousness, if you like The Flash as much as I do, and you do, because come on. There is something that happens in this episode that, just thinking about it, <clears throat> it will make you cry, so you need to watch it and be prepared for it, okay? Guys, just watch it. It's Because <laughs> it's such a good show, and the thing that happens, <laughs> I wish that somebody had told me and I'm telling you to just be prepared for it. Just be prepared for it in the show. And have a good time. That's The Flash this week, guys. Hey guys, what's happening on Wednesday? Arrow, let's talk about it. Last week, Rubicon resulted in the deaths of tens of thousands of people, which means that Damian Dark is in his ultimate form. Oh boy, they're gonna have to fight him, and that might smart, because he's real tough now. This week's episode, called Lost in the Flood, Green Arrow, Spartan, they've got to infiltrate the underground bunker. They're looking for Speedy. They're looking for their people. It's nuts. Also, Felicity has to leave Curtis with her dad, AKA Cutler, AKA The Calculator, and her mom, Donna Smoke. And as any child of divorced parents know, it's not always the best when they're in the same room and then there's a lot of yelling and yeah, arguing and fighting and poor Curtis has to uh, down a couple beers to kind of get through that. But it's hilarious, it's great. But it's not all hilarious and great. It's not all fun, guys. We are in the penultimate episode. We are on our way to the final confrontation between Green Arrow's team and Damian Dark. And I just wanna say this. I'm a huge fan of Speedy, of Thea Queen. All right, she's my girl. That's my girl right there. And in this episode, she becomes compromised. The bad guys get a hold of her brain, and she's gotta fight her own brother, Oliver Queen. That's right, we've got Green Arrow versus Speedy. It is a badass fight, and it's also heartbreaking. Some of those punches hurt, okay? That's happening Wednesday night on Arrow, two arrows at a time. Ping! I use three fingers because that's a proper way to do it. Save your comment. Holy sh! You guys, it's the last episode of Legends of Tomorrow. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe this. It's the season finale. The episode is called Legendary, and this one is legendary. Guys, Captain Cold is dead from last week's episode. He's dead, he sacrificed himself. Captain Cold, who is an awesome character, one of my favorite characters, and I think that Jeff Johns would agree. Anyway, guys, Cold is gone. The team has failed. Rip Hunter has to drop everybody else off in 2016, but not exactly where he picked them up in time, but rather months and months later, in real time, he's dropping them off in May this month. So what happens? Sarah Lance goes and has a nice little visit with her dad, Detective Lance, Star City PD. And Lance has got to tell her about what happened to her sister, Laurel Lance. And right now, we're gonna give you an exclusive preview here on DC All Access. We're gonna run this reenactment by me. Here we go. Hey, Sarah. I've been gone a while. I got some bad news, kid. Turns out uh, we were fighting Damien Dark and a bunch of guys and stuff. And well, your sister, she didn't make it, kiddo. I'm sorry. 
that's the way it is, that's the way it's gonna be. And that was an exclusive preview right there, what's happening in the season finale of Legends of Tomorrow. Guys, also, Kendra Hall runs into Easy Company from World War II, which is so cool. They are classic DC characters that, of course, in the comic books are led by the incomparable Sergeant Rock. So, so cool to see those guys. And I gotta remind everybody, again, this is the final confrontation between Vandal Savage and the Legends of Tomorrow, and it is an epic one. Plus, if you're a DC Comics fan, or even if you're not, and you're just curious and you wanna dive into the world, tune in for the final moments. Because in the last few minutes of this week's episode of Legends of Tomorrow, we're going to meet a DC Comics character that we haven't met yet, and it is awesome. I'm not going to tell you who it is, and I'm not going to tell you why they're there, but rest assured, you're going to want to tune in, and you're going to be excited about Season 2. That's happening on Legends of Tomorrow. Hot girl, baby. Oh, ah! Wow, mace. Or a golf swing. <sighs> Guys, you know what time it is. It's question of the week time. Last week we asked you, if you visited Star City, what would be the first thing that you would do? And right now, I'm gonna read some comments off of my phone and my normal phone case. Here we go. Jack Lyon says, I would kill Damien Dark. Dot, 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 who's with me? Good luck, Jack. Gaming Bat says, if I was in Star City, I would go to Big Belly Burger and buy a bunch of different foods that they sell. Superheroes live in the city. Maybe go talk to some superheroes. That's kind of cool. Because you can go to burger places in our... Never mind. All right, cool. That's cool, Gaming Bat. Okay. King Anime says, I will say to Oliver that there is someone better than you. His name is Batman. And then you get punched in the face immediately. Maybe tell him, hey, good job being Green Arrow and protecting the city. Falcon00 says, if I were in Star City, here we go. I'd go to Oliver's secret base, right, and rob them. What? Why would you do that? What the hell? Good luck. They probably have really good security. Rusho Benabi says, if I was in Star City, I would visit Oliver Queen, great, great so far, and become the Green Arrow sidekick, cool, and tell him to get Batman's help with battling Damian Dark. Guys, Green Arrow can, come on, man. Where's all the Green Arrow love? Star Battle War says, I would probably find the Green Arrow's lair and eat some cake while watching the Arrow on Netflix. In the Green Arrow's lair, you'd pull that up on, oh man. Kyan Ko says, I will train to be Arrow's sidekick and also pay my respects to one if the most sexy girls ever, Laura Lance. Well, that's not the most respectful way to open with that, that's fine. Obarium says, gotta give Hector props for sticking to the bit. Didn't even seem tired. What bit? What are you not telling me? Sebastian Maraghetti says, I would break inside Palmer Tech and steal the Adam suit. Now you're thinking, that's cool. Power Up says, I would go to the secret city where Thea is held and free her. Also, I will go there and stay there to survive Genesis. By the way, no caps this time. Except for right at the end, you did all caps. Lego Builder 12 says, if I went to Star City, I would, and then the recycle emoji. <laughs> cool. Someone's just like, I'm just gonna use this emoji real quick. The Epic Creeper says, I would tell everyone Oliver was the arrow and kill every villain in Star City. Man, that's confident. Jeez, I wish I had that kind of confidence. But here's what I do have. The next week's question of the week. Here it is, guys. Legends of Tomorrow is ending, and we know that we've got a super juicy, super secret, special, surprise DC comic book character showing up. But if it were up to you, which DC character that we haven't met yet in the Flash, Arrow, Legends universe would you want to see, outside of the big seven, if you know what I'm talking about, in Legends of Tomorrow, and maybe, possibly, become part of the crew? Write down in the comments below. There's literally no wrong answer except for seven wrong answers, but go for it. That's it for DC TV this week, guys, but be sure to go to dccomics.com after every episode airs for a complete list of hashtag DC TV secrets. There you go, guys. See you next time. Bye. Ah, dang it. What did I... Okay, I left the oven on. That's what it was. That's what it was. All right, one more time. Here we go. Time travel. It's a time machine. It's future tech. Here we go. Fix the time stream. Boom!